there's an actual um, a haplotype, which is the genetic word, which basically means a genetic marker, right? That is, is they've discovered that is in relation to separation anxiety. And um, one of the important things to know about that is that those are passed on through genes. And we have so many puppies, and here's another myth buster, Puppies cannot get separation anxiety, not true. And even purebred from the best breeders can have separation anxiety. So, so no, I think that the rescue dogs just get a bad rep. And it's very common that people say, oh, he's a rescue dog. And therefore, uh, but uh, quite frankly, our dogs are resilient, resilient. And so it's not necessarily the shelter environment that is inspiring, you know, separation related issues. Um, but I do understand that it's more common than not to assume that that's what are, where it's occurring. And you are an actively training dog trainer. You have a team of dog trainers that work with you. Do you find that in your, I guess, practice or your, in your business, do you see that it's pretty equal across the board? Yes. And I actually want to tell you if I have a moment, I want to yeah, tell please. you a funny story about this. So um, <clears throat> about 15 years ago, oh, dating myself, I've been doing this for t- almost 21 years now, separation and anxiety. And uh, about 15 years ago, I did one of my first speaking engagements here in the San Francisco Bay Area. And uh, I just was just, you know, basic, here's what separation anxiety is, yada, yada, yada. And as when we wrapped up someone, you know, there were question and answer period and someone said, Hey, do you see a prevalence in particular breeds? And I thought about it for a moment and I said, you know, I don't know if there is or is not, but I've got to tell you that 80% of my caseload is pit bull breeds or pit bull mixes. Everyone said, oh, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm." Fast forward about five to seven years from that, from that time and technology caught up. And we had Skype and we had other uh, online tools so that I was able to work with clients all over the world. And it dawned on me, and this is embarrassing. I used to be a statistician. So this is embarrassing that I didn't clue into this. But as soon as I had a worldwide market, I realized, oh, well, and hungry, there's a lot of Vishlas that have separation anxiety. In, uh, you know, Belgium, there's a lot of Malinois and uh, Havanese that have separation anxiety, you know, all these different areas, you know, where breeds were predominant, right? That breed was the predominant. And I just recently had, interestingly enough, a clubhouse interview where two or three of the people in the UK said, oh, Cavapoos, they all have separation anxiety. And I said, Oh, that's funny. You're all in the UK. And they all started laughing and they're like, you're right. Cavapoos are the number one breed in the UK right now. So if, if there's a predominance of a breed, of course, they're going to present more often, like just from a statistic perspective, right? right? Absolutely. Makes perfect so, sense. Yeah. We have not seen a breed specific or a rescue specific amount of separation anxiety. 